Um, it's been quite lovely. It's a wonderful group of people with really diverse backgrounds that have come together and it's fun to see how interwoven through all of it is a foundation of this truth that percolates through no matter what angle or what uh, venue you're coming from. Yeah, it's pretty good today actually. We're getting uh, a lot of interest. Yeah, that's why we haven't got it. Well, it's really kind of inspired by Patrick McGowan who did the Prisoner series. It's a collection of interviews with people who are challenging their reality as we know it really, without questioning. But the area I'm most interested in in, in general is exopolitics, the idea that there's a political cover-up and there's what's been exopolitics calls the truth embargo which is the idea that the state and certain private industries are well aware of the extraterrestrial presence. Because I really, really loved that series. Um, and he died, as you probably know, earlier on this year. Um, I actually, in fact, wrote to him about a couple of weeks before he died to ask if he'd write the foreword to the book, but obviously he couldn't. So it's really about freedom and it's about exploring a diverse range of ideas. The subject's just exploded. I don't think they can keep a lid on it. There is no one truth. Look at the tabloid, The Sun. Years ago, UFOs used to be ridiculed, used to be seen as wackos, etc. You look at the sun now and every other week they've got a UFO story, they've got a UFO picture, and it's not treated in any way as a fringe subject anymore. There's so many truths and it's a very personal thing. So I really wanted to kind of bring people together as a kind of challenge the information. And whether that information is it or finite is up to you really. You, you've got to keep exploring and keep challenging, keep asking why, always keep asking why. And why Liverpool? Liverpool, because Liverpool is a great city. I'm from the Wirral, I'm not a scouser technically. I've got a long association with the city. It needs something like this. This is in the great tradition of Liverpool, Merseysides. Challenge to the norm, which it's always had in the past. So it's kind of counterculture against the exactly. capital of culture. I'll, I'll Absolutely. You You've said it. It's counterculture against the capital of culture, and that was certainly what last year's was about. It was a statement about that. Because initially, I conceived of last year's conference as part of the whole 2008 thing. Then I realised that that was just a sham. Uh, as is as are many things, uh, unfortunately, in this world today. And I wanted to put on something real. And do you think you've achieved that? I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ask, ask the people who've been for that. I think the highlights are going to be the people. My name is Maren Clausen, New York City. Well, by all accounts, it's gone really well. I think all the speakers are good. I haven't actually seen very much of it, so I'm looking forward to watching the DVDs in my own good time. Keep looking. There's, um, you know, three, four Americans over, and you don't get to see them speaking often, like Richard Hoagland, Steve Bassett, and Peter Robbins. They don't come over very often. Then, for me, they're the most interesting ones. But, you know, there's some really good British speakers as well. It's the only way to do it. Apart from this interview now, what is the highlight of the weekend for you? Uh, I love that. That's very clever, very cute. Um, it's not just about the UFOs. It's brand about consciousness and spirituality and uh, understanding the nature of our reality that may be a little different. Are you coming back? Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity to give my two cents. I think it's great. It's really great to see such a, a wide variety of people from all walks of life. Everybody here is very hungry for knowledge and everybody here wants to find out things. Um, and it's great that there's an event like this that's there for people, you know? The face on Mars, a fascinating anomaly, a fascinating artifact. Something which was photographed 25 years ago, nearly 30 years ago, in 1976 by the Viking probes, the first ones sent to Mars. And they returned these images which appeared to show a human face on the Martian surface. It's subsequently been photographed in rather more detail, which indicates that it may well be very eroded. But there are many other things other than the face in that area. There was the city, there was the five-sided pyramid, there was the wall, there were many other things, and they haven't been investigated properly yet. So there may well be evidence of intelligent life once on Mars, trying to tell us that we would need to look after our planet because what happened to Mars appears to have been runaway global warming or something which destroyed whatever civilization was there and it's no longer there. Maybe they came to Earth. Maybe that's why we have so many ancient 
monuments which hark back to a time that we can't fully explain even now. So I went uh, looking and investigating uh, these ancient texts and I believe I found all of these people in the historical record. So all the way back from uh, Adam, all the way through uh, the patriarchs to the united monarchy of King David and King Solomon, uh, all the way through to the New Testament and uh, Jesus and the rest of his uh, followers. I think I found all of them pretty much within Egypt. So this is an Egyptian story about an Egyptian royal family. And it makes much more sense than the current story. How did they build the pyramids? How did they build the Sphinx? And who is it? What about uh, Tiwanaku in South America? What about the pyramids of China? Pyramids of Mexico? We don't understand these. So we have much to understand. Maybe the face on Mars is the first indication that we should start looking into our past with rather more of an open mind than we currently exhibit. I tend to actually get more abuse actually off Egyptologists than I do actually off the, the theologians. Most of the theologians I talk to uh, tend to be C of E and they're fairly open to new ideas. I suppose one or two of the Catholic priesthood I've talked to have been a little bit more upset by it. But I've been surprised at the amount of uh, vitriol and hatred I've had from Egyptologists who equally don't like their creed being played with, basically. Uh, they have a rigid orthodoxy. They don't like anyone who goes outside their their teachings. So I've had varying responses from people. And finally, what's next? What's next is that I'm going to South America uh, no, in I mean, a few so weeks. Is that with the Beyond? I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're through you, There's another it? one for the outtakes. <laughs> right, what's next for me? <laughs> well, everybody's yeah, saying, when's so. the next one, when's the next one? Um, bad time to ask me that because, you know, I'm sitting here now, I'm totally exhausted. If we do do another one next year, um, you're going to find that you'll have, I think, one of the best conferences in the country to go to in terms of the quality of the speakers, their integrity, their research, um, the knowledge that they have. You may not agree with all of them, not everybody agrees with each other, speaker-wise. That's not the point. The point is, think about things in a different way, because the world is not as it's been presented to us 